Well, good morning. Happy Sunday. It's a very happy purple day. Yeah. Brightness and purple and white at uh, Holy Spirit Sands. I just it's it's an expression of light and joy in the month of Shavet because the month of Shavet is all about happiness and joy and light and Jehovah Sakenu, the Lord thy righteousness, but it also talks about the joy of the Lord in this particular time. So how much joy you got, honey? Hey. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. And I hope the joy of the Lord is your strength out there, too. All the different people around the nation is kind of tuning in. So what do you have to uh, open up this morning? All right. So I'm, and again, I am borrowing a declaration. This is from um, Brenda Nash. And so it's like, I fear God and not man. And so before, before we can, we'll just say that, the fear of man sets the stage for people pleasing because at its core the fear of man is about our desire for approval and our need to fit in galatians 1:10 says for i am for am i now seeking the approval of man or of god good question it's a good question to ask ourselves from time to time or am i trying to please man if i were still trying to please man i would not be a servant of christ Mm. Amen. But sadly, we fear that what others will say about us, think about us, and behave towards us if we preach the whole gospel. So that we, other so typically, then there's a tendency to preach the watered down version. If we prophesy correction, rebuke, and warnings, so then the other side says, "Well, we pre- we prophesy cotton candy prophecies or sugar coated." fluff to gain likes and followers you know all that social media stuff right um we obey god against the cultural norm or we partake of what the world is doing Mm. we stand for jesus in word and in action or we stay silent unfortunately the human tendency is we love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. And John twelve forty two and 43 sort of touches on that. We want acceptance from man more than well done, good and faithful servant. Sad, but true, unless we fear God more than man. As a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, each one of us must take up our cross, which means that we must be ready to be mocked, hated, Hmm. met with anger, and persecuted. Not that being a disciple only brings persecution, but our hearts need to be sold out for Jesus even when adversity comes knocking. Many disciples in Scripture were beaten, stoned, flogged, and imprisoned. And we find some of that in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 to 27. And several were killed. Yet Jesus warned them not to... Let the fear of man stop them from proclaiming the gospel. In our Western world, we tend to pray, decree, and declare things that keep us in the comforts of our wants and our pleasures. But in this new kingdom age, God is calling us to desire him and surrender all. We do not speak from mere head knowledge, but from this place of obedience. I boldly declare that Jesus and each one of us has boldly declared, I know that to be so, for those that are with us you know, here and, and online, I'm sure there's a lot more of you as well, boldly declared Jesus amongst unbelieving family members and done outrageous prophetic acts that may have been deemed a little insane or crazy um, by neighbors or others. But in boldness, we must obey God rather than man according to Acts 5.29, because God is looking for those who will fear him and only him. If we remember, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Psalm 118.6. Then we will have comfort and confidence in all we endeavor to do to advance the kingdom of God. And that's our purpose, as well as to bring glory and honor to the king. Amen the king 
that his presence and his glory that he is honored above all else. So therefore we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear, what can man do to me? And there's in Hebrews 13.6. So let's decree and declare together that we will fear God and not man. Amen. So Father, I thank you for your word that says, the fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Therefore, I decree and declare that I and we will not be ensnared by the fear of man because we trust in you. We will fear the Lord and obey him. Uh -huh. So let the fire of Holy Spirit fall upon the enemy's camp that is trying to sow fear into any one of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. And we decree and declare that we refuse to accept and operate in fear. I uproot it in the name of Jesus Christ, for God has not given you or me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of the sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 I stand against the spirit of fear that is trying to operate in my life or the life of others around me, and I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I submit and we submit ourselves to God. We resist the devil and his schemes. Right now, I bind and destroy any demonic powers that are trying Amen. to take over my mind or any one of our minds, my thinking, my heart, to fear man and gain his approval. I dismantle them now in the name of Jesus Christ, and I will not, we will not, love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. Instead, I will and we will fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Mm. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard, according to Isaiah 59, 19. Like a bursting flood, the Lord has burst out against my enemies before me. 2 Samuel 5, 20. I decree and declare that all fear of man is broken off my life, off your life. We will not be anxious about what others may say or to do against us. I decree and declare that all forms and manners of intimidation are null and void. From this day forward, mm -hmm. we will stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and will not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, according to Galatians 5.1. The boldness of the lion of the tribe of Judah rests on me, rests on you, rests on each one of us. So we therefore declare that we have been given the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me hurt you when we walk like, with him like this. And I decree that I am bold, faithful, and willing to serve the Lord as he leads. Make that your decree. Make that your heart's Amen. cry and what you speak. I'm bold, faithful, and willing to serve the Lord as he leads and desire only to please him. I seek the approval of God and not man because I fear him. Wow. So let's pause and think about that. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, Two weeks ago, um, you were in Winnipeg at a conference for women, and yep. I, I preached the word here. And what I preached about was the speed of light and the speed of sound is uh, celestial. And, uh, and the speed of light and the speed of sound flows through us. And you might say, well, how does that work? Well, um, we are made in the... In the, in the substance and the image of Adonai Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have the DNA of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of, uh, who created all of us, right? Mm -hmm. So in saying that, uh, this is the month uh, or constellation of Aquarius. Now, don't we look like water fountains? Like, I mean, aren't we carriers of the light and the water? Yeah, you know, you use your you know, imagination. Th this, well, I'm just saying, you know, like we, we, we could be springs of living water coming up because we are commissioned by heaven to be the water carriers or bringing, right. bring, Jesus says, drink of me and you shall never thirst again. So we, we preach the gospel. And, you know, you cannot sacrifice truth for peace. Mm -hmm. I'll say that slower. You cannot sacrifice truth truth for peace. You cannot minimize the blood of Jesus Christ to create spiritual aids in yourself 
or in the pulpit or where you're preaching the word of God to others to come and, and minimize the blood. Mm -hmm. You cannot put the Holy Spirit in a box. And you cannot say to the Father, you don't have authority in this house. You cannot sacrifice truth to water down your version of whatever your doctrine is to give you peace with man so you can fill the pulpit. I'm, I'm sorry, to fill, uh, fill the coppers in the, in, you know, for people giving or whatever it may be to please man. We please the Father, we please the Son, and we please the Holy Spirit. Um, then last week, I wasn't here because I, I, I wasn't feeling well. But you, you talked about and preached about the matters of the heart. Isn't that awesome? So this, this today, uh, we have Shannon and Dale Jack here that are going to be ministering in worship, but also in, uh, in the prophetic word as a prophet and seer and, and flowing in the things that God is going to speak, to speak to you about today. To speak to you about today. I, I've got to share this testimony because I ran into somebody yesterday in, in a in a in, in a uh, in a grocery store, and he he was so excited. He was, and and he didn't care who heard him. He was we, we went uh, Ryan and myself we we went to the Hutterite colony uh, uh, just before Christmas to get some, some chickens and some different things. And Aaron was in so much pain. He said, "Pray, you know, uh, I, I, he, you can talk to Aaron." You can talk to Aaron about this, Hoffer. Okay? One day he'll maybe come and give testimony. He gave testimony. I can share this because he gave testimony in Carberry. Uh, and uh, people were listening, even to, even the butcher who was cutting the, our, our meat for today. <laughs> and he says, I'm healed. You guys prayed for me. I am healed. Healed 100%. No pain. Amen. No pain. I'm 100% healed. And he had a chronic issue with his back for many many years god can bring healing just when you least expect it mm -hmm. he accepted the prayer in faith when myself and ryan prayed for him in his house at the hutterite colony at riverbend and god has healed him yeah and he's running around like a 25 year old and he's like 85 he is he, he's, he's at least he is so about, excited yeah. about jesus you get excited about jesus when you have a jesus encounter of the best kind so when I talked about the light two weeks ago, I, the reason I'm saying this is that the speed of light and the speed of darkness move at the same time. At the same, the, it moves at 1.07 kil, kil, kilometers, uh, billion kilometers per hour. That's what light moves at, like out there. So does darkness. So the Father comes and has continually been pushing back the darkness with light Every, that's why we read Genesis chapter 1. The Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, wants to push back the darkness in your life and bring more light in. Amen. Oh. So one of the scriptures, we've been going for over 30 years now as a ministry, but one of the, our foundational scriptures was uh, 2 Samuel uh, 22, uh, 13. And, uh, and I'll read to about 20. If you can get... Uh, um, if, if you can get, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I'd like you to read uh, Acts chapter 3 mm -hmm. and um, 13 uh, to 25, but uh, 17, 18, and 19 lines up with that. Times of refreshing are here. Mm. I prophesy Acts 3.19 to you. Times of of refreshing are here when you come into a place of repentance and turn away from those things of darkness. God is going to bring refreshing unto you, bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to the unsaved. I'm talking to the bride of Christ here. Because it's repent, turn away, and times of refreshing, that word refreshing in the Hebrew is Ruach HaKadosh. So I'm going to blow my Holy Spirit into you, bride of Christ, the same way I blew the Ruach HaKadosh the breath of God that Father blew into Adam that brought him alive. I'm going to bring that life to you. Times of refreshing are now. This is the time of now and refreshing. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. So out of, this is a scripture we've, we've had since the start. 
And it talks about a lightning bolt. And I explained, you can go back two weeks ago, and I, I, I put on my uh, Professor RP hat. And I, and I did all the, uh, I know, I did all that stuff as far as explaining. Yes. Oh. Yes, Professor. Yeah, I know. Oh, thank you. Okay, so Second uh, Samuel 22, the father pulls out his arrow out of his quiver, and he brings it back, and he shoots it, bang, right at you. And it goes right into darkness and expels. The light expels the darkness. So here's, it says here, From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled, and the Lord thundered from heaven. That's his shofar. I thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, the voice of God. He sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning bolts, and he vanquished the enemy. He vanquished the darkness with, he's shooting his arrows into darkness. Mm -hmm. His light arrows yep. that travel faster than 1.07 kilometers per, per billion miles per kilometer per hour. He's faster than that. And he's faster than darkness. Oh, man. Uh, then the channels of the sea were opened. The foundations of the world were uncovered. At the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of his breath, of his nostrils, he sent from above, he took me and drew me out of many waters. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me. Mm. Which you read uh, uh, Acts 3, 17, 18, and 19. The enemy hates us because the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach is inside us. Don't take it personally. From those who hated me, they were, they were too strong for me. They, they confronted me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my support. He was my support. He brought me out into a broad place and delivered me because he delighted in me. The river of delights. Come, drink of my river of delights. Come, stand in the light to receive more light. Come, drink of the fountain of life. And receive who you are in the blessings of the Lord that wants to bless you from heaven on earth. Go ahead and, okay. and then, we'll, uh, then Dale, then, if you want to come. Yeah. Dale and Shannon. Yeah, Dale's so, going to start with worship. Um, so yeah, so we're going to read Acts 3, and this is out of the uh, Legacy Standard Bible, uh, starting in verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, mm. but put to death the author of life whom God raised from the dead, a fact to which we are witnesses. Mm. And on the basis of faith in his name, it is the name of Jesus which has strengthened this man whom you see and know, and the faith which is through him has given him this perfect health in mm. the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, just as your rulers mm. did also. But the things which God announced beforehand by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Therefore, verse 19, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord mm -hmm. and that he may send Jesus the Christ appointed for you, whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient times. And Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. To him you shall listen to everything he says to you. And it will be that every soul that does not heed that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Mm -hmm. And likewise all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and his successors onward also proclaimed these days, it is you who are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first, God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways. Mm. 
So let's worship the Lord and yes. let's uh, let's just open our hearts and our uh, just to receive everything that God has for us. Times today. of refreshing are near. Yeah.
today. Hallelujah. We thank him. We praise him. Hallelujah. You know, I was um, thinking of... The Lord is, and, and I was reading the scriptures, and I touched on it a bit at the conference and the women's conference a, a couple of weeks ago. And um, you know how in Luke two, uh, it said, Luke two verse thirteen. Suddenly, along with the angel was a vast army from heaven praising yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. And they sing. And they sang in the highest heaven, glory to God, and on yeah. earth shalom. Or peace among people of goodwill and and looking in the scriptures again at in first Kings chapter 22 verse 19 uh, this prophet he said I saw Adonai sitting on his throne with the whole army of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left and I, you know I was I was sharing how you know we we get we have Christmas cards and you know, every now and then there's there's a few angels in the sky, maybe six of them, and they're mm, in their right. frilly white yes. gowns. But yes. the scripture says they were a vast army. Amen. And when yeah. you think of who Adonai Zabaot is, he is the Lord of heaven's mm -hmm. armies. He is the God of angel armies. He is the Lord of hosts. <coughs> That's who they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to think of... Um, you know, of 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 um, the the army, the angel army, and to think of the glory of the Lord. You know, I just I just it just blessed my heart. You know, even Jeremiah t talked about the entire army of heaven in Jeremiah chapter eight, and and we know the story of um, you know when the the prophet was surrounded by the enemy and, and he told the, the Lord, open this young man's eyes because the young man was afraid, his servant was afraid. And the Lord said, open his eyes. And, and all of a sudden, you know, in Second Kings chapter 6, verse 17, he said, the mountain was covered with horses and fiery chariots. And Isaiah 13, verse 4, this is what I love, listen a tumult on the mountains. It sounds like a vast multitude. Mm. Listen, the uproar of the kingdom of the nations gathering together. Mm. Adonai Zavaot is mustering an army for war. He's, he's armed us. He's prepared us. Even when uh, the children of Israel came out of Egypt, you know, they were, they were, um, they were armed. They came out of Egypt armed. So I, I thought that was, how could they be afraid? You know, you flip the page and then they're afraid. <laughs> when they see Pharaoh and his uh, army coming behind them, how could they be afraid? They came out armed and the God of heaven and earth was, was you know, with them. And, and, you know, mustering means assembling troops, especially for inspection or in preparation for battle. So I thank God, you know, who he is, Adonai Zavaot. So the other day, I was doing laundry again, and I put together this little tune. <laughs>
us also. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the shield of faith. And it's not, I always say, it's not any ordinary shield. It's a shield that will quench the fiery arrows of the adversary. Amen. It's a special shield. Amen. And I thank God, you know, for his word that is the sword of the spirit. And loins gird about with truth and and um, feet, yes. you know, shod with the preparation of, of the gospel of Shalom. Yes. So I thank God, you know, that just for who he is, that he's, yes. when he called us, he equips us. Yes. Amen. And I just Amen. love him for that. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
that Shannon is going to speak. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to bring you one of these. Is that too, is that good? That is good. That's good? Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, this is you. Shannon. Amen. Jack. Shannon Jack. And he's a prophet and a seer, so receive a prophet's blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's good to be in uh, Resurrection Life Ministries here in Carberry, Manitoba. You know, I give God the praise and everything for He's done for me, and and uh, you know, I I really enjoy the Lord. You know, when He talks to you, He speaks to you, He shows you things, and you know, when it, it takes consecration to just to to be listening listening to His voice. You know that when He speaks to me, He also speaks to you also. And I thank the Lord, Amen, for for everything. You know that at, at once we when we serve the Lord, we learn to uh, stay and keep tuned to the Lord, what He's saying to us. And uh, you know, I I just have a uh, read a, uh, some scriptures here, and we'll go from here. And uh, I'm going to read from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34. We'll just start from maybe verse 4, 34 and 4. It says. And I said to him, This is the land concerning which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over thee. He's talking to Moses. So Moses, the servant of Adonai, died there in the land of Moab, and Adonai had said he was buried in the valley across the Beit Peor, in the land of Moab, to this day, no one knows where he, his grave is. Moshe was 120 years old when he died. With eyes undimmed and vigor undiminished, the people of Israel mourned Moshe on the plains of Moab for 30 days. After this, the days of crying and mourning for Moshe ended. Yahushua or Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. You know, and that's the kind of life we need to have. Full of the spirit of wisdom. Yeah. You know, when we walk with the Lord, we have to learn to grasp and hold on to the, the fullness of the spirit of wisdom of God. Amen. Amen. And it says, that's what, it says that's what Joshua had. You know, he was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moshe had laid his hands on him. You know, it's so important. You know, that's a, even today when, when someone passes away or, or uh, if someone dies, you know, before they die, if they, I've seen this happen, me and my wife have seen this happen, that when people, before they pass, they lay their hands on their loved ones, they lay their hands on their sons or their daughters and, and mm -hmm. bless them before they left this world. You know, something great happened to them. God moved on their behalf. Just like Joshua. He was, when Moses prayed for him, laid hands on him, it says he was, that's where uh, Joshua got the full, uh, the spirit, the full wisdom of the spirit, the spirit of wisdom. Amen. And it says, and the people of Israel heeded him, and he, and did what Anna had ordered Moshe. Since that time, there was not a rising of Israel a prophet like Moshe whom Adonai knew face to face. What signs and wonders Adonai had sent to perform in the land of Egypt upon Pharaoh and all the servants in all the land, his land, what might was in the hand, what might was in his hand, what great terror he invoked before the eyes of all Israel. You know, and, and, you know when the, we look back into the story of what happened, you know, the people were very afraid of God when he spoke, you know, it was so powerful. People were afraid to, to even told Moses, we don't want, we don't want to hear, hear God himself. You know, you told Moses, you go up to the mountain right. and talk to God and, and then you come back and tell us what he says. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, people were so fearful of the voice of the Lord. And they were so fearful of him to, to, to hear him and, and, and uh, when he spoke, you know, and it was it was a fearful thing, you know, and that it tells us right in the Word of God that the people were scared of His voice, you know, and they told Moses, you go up and you 
get instructions from the Lord and come and tell us what He says. You know, <laughs> just like the, the preachers today, uh, when we speak the Word of God, we're telling you what the Lord is saying today. You know, and, and we read from His Word and, and go on to the next chapter here, and it says in, in Joshua chapter 1, and we'll start from, uh, maybe start from number 1, I guess. Here we go. And it says, After the death of Moshe, or Moses, the servant of Adonai, Adonai said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moshe, Moshe's assistant, Moshe, my servant is dead, so now get up, cross over this Jordan, or this Jordan, and all the people of Israel, and I'll, I am giving to them, the people of Israel, I am giving you every place mm, you great. will step on with the sole of your foot. As I said to Moshe, all the land from the desert to the Le Lebanon and to the great river Euphrates River, all the land of the Hittite and, and on the great sea and in the west will be your territory. No one be able to withstand you as long as you live. You know, that's how God is in our life. It says no one will be able to withstand you as long as you live. When you have God in your life, no one be able to, to, to conquer you. You know, that's how God is. God is always in our lives, and, and He stands strong in us. You know, and that's what He's telling the people here. and says, just as I was with Moshe, I will be with you, and I will, I will neither fall, fail you nor abandon you. You know, that's what God does for us. He doesn't forsake us. He doesn't leave us hanging somewhere. Or, but He's always on time, you know. Right. And I thank the Lord for that. You know, he's always on time. He says, I'll never leave you nor I'll never abandon you. And it says, be strong. And it says, be bold. For you, for you will cause this people to inherit the land I swore to their fathers. And I will give them. I, will, I would give them. It says, only be strong and very, and very bold in taking care to follow all the Torah or all the word of God which Moshe and my servants ordered you to follow. Do not turn from neither to the right or to the left. Then you will succeed wherever you go. Yes, keep this book of the Torah or the word of God on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you will take care to act according to everything it is written in it. Then your undertaking will prosper, and you will succeed. Haven't I ordered you to be strong, be bold? So don't be afraid or downhearted, because Adonai, your God, is with you wherever you go. It says here in verse 10, it says, Joshua, or Joshua, instructed the officials of the people, go through the camp and order the people, prepare provisions, because in three days we will cross over this Jordan to get, go in and put, take possession of the land Adonai your God is giving you. And uh, that is very, very precious. That is so powerful. Mm. You know, even in our daily life, God is telling us to be bold, to be strong in His Word. Yeah. Even giving us instructions to, 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 uh, to read His Word, meditate on it. Uh, uh, soak it in, you know, learn from it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and telling us to do all the what is good for us. Right. You know, and, and God has said that if we just do that and, and keep my words, yeah. you know, that's what our Christian walk, our, when we serve the Lord, we learn to keep God's words, all of it. Don't, don't uh, leave some out. You know, some of us, we kind of take, it's like a buffet table. You, <laughs> you take, a, <laughs> you take a little bit of a, uh, what you want from that buffet table and what's really good for you, yeah. that's uh, good for your body, good for your nourishment, that's what we leave out sometimes, you know. Right. So the Word of God, we need to take, take it as in whole. Mm -hmm. You know, take every word. Some of it might be sweet, some of it might be good for vegetables, some of it might be <laughs> bitter. <laughs> but, you know, we need to take all of it in, you know. And, but that's what God is telling us. He instructs us to, 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 to do, you know, and, and to... Uh, Take all the word in, and, 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 and you know, God said He's going to bless us. He's going to, He's just telling us to, to meditate on day and night, you know. Mm -hmm. And he, he tells us to be strong mm -hmm. and be very bold, you know. And, and, and He's going to take, what we, like, we can go over to this Jordan and take possession of this land. You know, that's what we need to do in our own life. Take possession. You know, don't let the devil 
fight us, fight us every day. You know, that, that battle has been fought already. Jesus won. You know, but Satan thinks he has control yet by tempting us. But, you know, take possession and be bold. Tell the devil, get out. Move. Get out of here. This is my territory. This is mine, you know. God has fought that battle. He won it for us, you know. But, but we have to learn to stand strong. Stand in the Word of God, you know. And, and no matter what kind of storm of life we're going through, Take a stand on, on all your problems. Take a stand on, on what's going on in our life. You know, sometimes our, we look at our lives, our lives are like us. Our, our life is some sunny days and sometimes we get a storm. Yeah. And there are many storms. Yeah. <laughs> there are many storms of life. You know, just, uh, you know, like for me, I was just, just a while ago, I, I was listening to this. Uh, if you ever watch these uh, NASA, uh, what they're... <laughs> What they're saying, uh, what's happening out, 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 way up there, you know? And they're talking about these asteroids going to be passing by through Earth, and, you know, some of them are going to come so near and so close to Earth. They don't know. They, they, this is their assumption that it might miss Earth. But some of them are saying it might hit Earth, you know? They're, uh, they're, they're really undecided what to announce, announce. What, 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 is it going to pass, or is it going to hit, or is it going to just, just really close, you know? And all these things were going on, and, and here I had two dreams about that. And uh, these are like even solar storms okay. we're talking about. Okay. And also, we were talking about a lot of uh, things that are happening, stars and asteroids, and things are going by the Earth, and and uh, we see that happening. You know, if you, if you listen, tune into NASA or look into NASA, uh, what they're talking about, what the news comes out of from NASA. But here, the Lord showed me a dream. I was, in this dream, I was traveling down the uh, highway, out in, uh, going east, and uh, going, I, I just remember leaving Winnipeg. I was going east and, and all of a sudden, we were listening to the radio. We always had our Christian music on. We had it turned up, and all of a sudden, we just heard a like a, a what do you see on your cell phones? That uh, uh, a warning. A warning. Uh, no. So the radio was warning, going beep 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 beep, and an announcement came on. We're trying to check the channels on our. But this was a dream, and I was checking the channels. Every station was had the same uh, warning. No channels were. And all went, I was, I so I just stopped and listened to see what that warning was, and uh, and the warning was it, it says that uh, there's a they see a huge asteroid coming towards Earth. It said, and uh, go undercover because there's going to be a lot of other smaller asteroids hitting like like all over, and that's what they were talking about, you know. And 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 it came back to normal, and the radio came back on. You know, and we're driving, we're wondering if we should turn around or go. But we pulled over on the road because everybody started pulling over or stopped. You know, and here in this dream, I see this huge asteroid come kind of out of the western sky, falling towards the east. And uh, I could just see it falling, kind of go out of sight. And all of a sudden, I heard a, I, the, it was a, like a, a big earthquake. The, the world was shaking like an earthquake. And you know, and... Uh, and just like a big blast of wind hit, you could see it blow over the trees, and the dust was flying, and all I could see from far as you can see was just that the the the, the wind or the the everything started going orange and red from wind, like the whole sky on one side of where it hit. I don't know where it went hit. Maybe it hit way down in the state somewhere, but it seems so close. But, uh, you know, I was so scared and fearful. We turned around. We couldn't see nothing. It's like, it was just like, it was, it, was, it was a sunny day. But just then, it was like it turned into night. Just moments. But I turned my lights on. We turned around. Went back to Winnipeg. And I thought maybe I'll just go home or go find my daughters and go undercover in this dream. But, but when I got to Winnipeg, it, it was just crazy. People were running here and there looking for their families and trying to gather their families and 
and uh, they were trying to go somewhere, you know, and and uh, and here when we get to Winnipeg, I I uh, I started to pray out loud. We couldn't even move. We, as soon as we got to the city, there was no everyone. Everyone's car was on the road. Nobody was moving. They were just jumping out of their cars, and you know we couldn't even get through. We couldn't. Even, I couldn't even get through my home. So I told me and Dale, I said, let's get out, we'll walk home, we'll try to find, do something. But then uh, our, our, my cell phone started to beep again, a warning, a signal. And here this warning light was, was take cover. Uh, they said there were small asteroids following that big hit. You know, and here uh, when we looked, <laughs> it was just like hailstones falling from the sky, about big as... Uh, Big as a car, uh, these like stones wow. hitting. You just heard, heard them going boom, 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 all like that. Like every quarter mile was hitting far off. So everybody was. They were telling people to look up and try to dodge the, that uh, those falling smaller asteroids hitting the, the 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 ground. You know, and and I was watching it and here these things were hitting the building and knocking them flat. Like that, and everybody was just running crazy. Yeah, this was the dream that I had, you know, and 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 seeing that happen, you know, and and then the following a few more weeks later, I have another dream similar, but here I was trapped in a city, you know, and then same thing again. Two dreams in a row with falling asteroids hitting the earth, and people were crazy running, looking for their families, screaming, yelling. It was uh, like a real mess, you know. I I just remember praying to God, and people are coming up to me and asking me, "I want Jesus too." Mm. I want Jesus too. They're yelling. Mm. I said, "Come here, come." Let's. I'll even say the sinner's prayer. Whoever wants to serve the Lord, whoever wants to give their heart to God, come. You know, and I, I started to pray out, and everybody come out of the shadows and around the buildings and they were crying and asking Jesus to come into their heart. Mm -hmm. They were so fearful, afraid of the storms. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's how God is. God wants us to serve Him with all our heart. Serve Him with all we got. You know, don't, don't try to fool around or play with God because He sees everything. Yeah. You know, we might look around in the room, see who's there, who's not there, mm -hmm. but uh, He don't forget to look up, you right. know, he's up there watching you. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to call him Dale here now and yeah. uh, let her take, take this part here. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here today. Thank you, God, for who you are, Lord. Thank you, God. We just worship you. We acknowledge you today. We, we receive you. We honor you. We love you. We adore you. Just thank you for your word that is spirit and life. And I pray, Lord, that as we read through these scriptures, Lord, that people would receive divine revelation and also have a desire to serve and love you more mm -hmm. today than yesterday. Yeah. And Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Yeshua. Yeah. Thank you for your anointing that breaks every yoke yeah, in the name of Yeshua. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I want to read from... Um, I'm, I'm, the text is going to be uh, Judges 13... To 16. It's the story of, of Samson. And um, when, when I started reading the first verse in the 13th chapter, it says, Again, the people of Israel did what was evil from Adonai's perspective, mm. and Adonai handed them over to the Plishtim or to the Philistines for 40 years. And so looking at the, I have the complete Jewish study Bible. 
and looking at this, it said, um, after the death of Yahashua, the constant refrain, the people of Israel did what was evil from Adonai's perspective. So that's in chapter 2, verse 11, chapter 3, verses 7 and 12. Chapter 4, verse 1, chapter 6, verse 1, chapter 10, verse 6. And that's why chapter 13 starts off with, again, (laughs) the people of Israel did what was evil from Adonai's perspective. And Adonai handed them over to the Plishtim for 40 years. There was a man from Zorah, from the family of Dan, whose name was Manoach. His wife was barren, childless. The angel of Adonai appeared to the woman and said to her, Listen, you are barren. You haven't had a child, but you will conceive and bear a son. Now therefore be careful not to drink any wine or other intoxicating liquor and don't eat anything unclean. So here, um, uh, not to eat anything unclean, there was dietary laws given to the children of Israel in the book of Leviticus chapter 11. And 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 then he says, For indeed you will conceive and bear a son. No razor is to to touch his head, because the child will be an azar for God from the womb. Moreover, he will begin to rescue Israel from the power of the Plishtim. So that was the purpose of his life. Um, You know, and so here the woman, verse 6, the woman came and told her husband, she said, A man of God came to me. His face was fearsome, like that of the angel of God. I didn't ask him where he came from, and he didn't tell me his name. But he said to me, Listen, You will conceive and bear a son, so now don't drink any wine or other intoxicating liquor, and don't eat anything unclean, because the child will be a Nazir for God from the womb until the day he dies. Then Manoach prayed to Adonai, Please, Adonai, let the man of God you sent come again to us and teach us what we should do for the child who will be born. Adonai paid attention to what Manoach said, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But her husband, Manoach, wasn't with her. The woman hurried and ran to tell her husband, Here, that man, the one who came to me the other day, he's come again. Manoach got up, followed his wife, went to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to the woman? He answered, I am. Manoach asked, Now when? What you said comes true. What are the guidelines for raising the child? What should be done for him? The angel of Adonai said to Manoach, The woman should take care to do everything I said to her. She shouldn't drink anything that comes from a grapevine. She shouldn't drink wine or other intoxicating liquor. And she shouldn't eat anything unclean. She should do everything I ordered her to do. So that was also... Uh, for a Nazir, the, the instructions were uh, written in Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. So, uh, Judges chapter 13, verse 15, Manoach said to the angel of Adonai, Please stay with us a bit longer so that we can cook a young goat for you. The angel of Adonai said to Manoach, Even if I do stay, I won't eat your food. And if you prepare a burnt offering, you must offer it to Adonai. For Manoach did not know he was the angel of Adonai. Manoach said to the angel of Adonai, Tell us your name, so that when your words come true, we can honor you. The angel of Adonai answered him, Why are you asking about my name? It is wonderful. Hmm. Manoach took the kid and the grain offering and offered them on the rock to Adonai. Then, with Manoach and his wife looking on, The angel did something wonderful. As the flame went up toward the sky from the altar, the angel of Adonai went up in the flame from the altar. When Manoach and his wife saw it, they fell to the ground on their faces. But the angel of Adonai did not appear again to Manoach or his wife. Then 
Manoach realized it had been the angel of Adonai. Manoach said to his wife, We will surely die because we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If Adonai had wanted to kill us, he wouldn't have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from us, and he wouldn't have shown us all this or told us such things at this time. The woman bore a son and called him Shimshon. We know him as Samson, and Shimshon means the strong, daring one. The child grew, and Adonai blessed him. And listen to this. The spirit of Adonai began to stir him when he was in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtaol. So, uh, and I'm thinking, you know, after having this experience with the angel going up in the flame and, and, and as Shimshon is growing, you know, his mom must have told him, you know, the story of how the angel of God or of how God came to her because the angel of the Lord is another name for God. And, you know, she must have told him, you know, all what the angel said and, and what they saw when the angel went up in the flame. And, and so, you know, you would think that would have a great impact on his life. And, and, and I begin to think of, you know, the angel going up in the flame and thinking of the story that we know as Moshe and the burning bush, you know, how he uh, turned and saw that the bush wasn't burning. But Psalm 29 verse 7 says, The voice of Adonai flashes fiery flames. And, and, uh, and thinking about you know, the angel of the Lord, how the angel of the Lord, you know, is, is a, a flaming fire, you know, and I, I just, I just love that about the Lord, you know, how, how they can, how they just, they're, they're so powerful, they're so amazing, you know, and, and to see that wonderful sight, you know, so then uh, chapter 14, uh, verse 1, Shimshon went down to Timnah, and in Timnah, he saw a woman who was one of the Plishtim. So here was the territory of Dan, and he goes down to Timnah, which is the territory of the Philistines. It, and and in, it says, he came up and told his father and mother, I saw a woman in Timnah, one of the Plishtim. Now get her for me to be my wife. His father and mother replied, Isn't there any woman from the daughters of your kinsmen or among all my people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Plishtim to find a wife? Mm -hmm. Shimshon said to his father, Get her for me. I like her. Mm -hmm. His father and mother didn't know that all this came from Adonai, who was seeking grounds for a quarrel with the Plishtim. Mm -hmm. At that time, the Plishtim were ruling Israel. Shimshon went down with his father and mother to Timnah. When they came to the vineyards of Timnah, a young lion roared at him. The spirit of Adonai came powerfully upon Shimshon. So that's the first time. And barehanded, he tore the lion to pieces as easily as if it had been a young goat. But he didn't tell his father or mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman and found he still liked her. Verse 8, a while later he was returning to claim his bride. He turned aside to look at the carcass of the lion and saw that there was now a swarm of bees in the body of the lion and honey. He scraped the honey out into his hands and went on eating as he went. And when he came to his father and mother, he gave them some. And they ate too, but he didn't tell them that he had scraped the honey out of the body of the lion. Why didn't he tell his parents? Mm -hmm. Well, he wasn't to touch, yeah, he wasn't to approach a corpse. But this, um, this dead lion, uh, a carcass or a corpse is another word for dead body. So here he is, you know, going against what he was told not to do and then sharing it with his parents. Mm -hmm. 
And verse 10, his father went down to the woman, and there Shimshon gave a banquet. That is what the young men used to do. When the Plishtim saw him, they provided 30 companions to be with him. Shimshon said to them, let me present you with a riddle. If you can solve it within the seven days of the banquet and tell me the solution, I will give you 30 linen shirts and 30 changes of good clothes. But if you can't solve it, you give me 30 linen shirts and 30 changes of good clothes. They answered, tell us the riddle. We want to hear it. So he said to them, out of the eater came food, out of the strong came sweetness. Three days passed, and they couldn't solve the riddle. On the seventh day, they said to Shimshon's wife, Coax your husband into telling us the solution to the riddle. Otherwise, we'll burn down your father's house and you with it. You two called us here to turn us into paupers, didn't you? Shimshon's wife went to him in tears and said, You don't love me. You hate me. You told a riddle to my fellow countrymen, and you haven't told me the answer. Mm -hmm. He said to her, Look, I haven't even told it to my father and mother. Should I tell you? But she had been crying throughout the seven days of the banquet. So on the seventh day, she, because she had kept pressing him, he told her the solution, and she passed it on to her people. Then before sundown on the seventh day, the men of the city came to him. What is sweeter than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? Shimshon answered, If you hadn't plowed with my young cow, you wouldn't have solved my riddle now. Then the spirit of Adonai came over him powerfully. This is the second time. He went down to Ashkelon. This is in the territory of the Plishtim. Killed 30 of their men, took their good clothes, and gave them to the men who had solved the riddle. He was boiling with rage so that he went straight up to his father's house and his wife was given to the companion who had been the best man at the wedding. Mm. Chapter 15. But after a while during the wheat harvest season, Shimshon went to see his wife. He brought a young goat for her and said to her father, I want to go to my wife in her room, but he wouldn't let him. Her father said, I really thought you had, I really thought you hated her altogether, so I gave her to your best man. But her younger sister, isn't she even prettier? Why not take her instead? Shimshon said to them, this time I'm through with the Plishtim. I'm going to do something terrible to them. So Shimshon went and caught 300 foxes, mm. or they could have been jackals. Then he took torches, tied pairs of foxes to each other by their tails, and put a torch in the knot of every pair of tails. Then he set the torches on fire and let the foxes loose in the wheat fields of the Plishtim. In this way he burned up the harvested wheat along with the grain waiting to be harvested and the olive orchards as well. The Plishtim asked, who did this? They answered, Shimshon, the son-in-law of the man from Timnah, because he took Shimshon's wife and gave her to his best man. Then the Plishtim came up and burned both her and her father to death. Shimshon said to them, I will certainly have my revenge on you for doing such a thing, but after I do, I'll stop. Infuriated, he began killing them right and left. It was a massacre. Then he went down and stayed in the cave at Item Rock. The Plishtim went up, pitched camp in Yehuda, at, and attacked Lechai. The men of Yehuda said, why are you attacking us? They replied, to arrest Shimshon. That's why. To treat him the way he treated us. Then 3,000 men from Yehuda went down to the cave at the Aitam Rock and said to Shimshon, Don't you know that the Plishtim are our rulers? What are you doing to us? He answered, I've only treated them the way they treated me. They said to him, We've come down to arrest you and hand you over to the Plishtim. Shimshon replied, Swear to me that you won't fall on me yourselves. They said to him, No, but we will tie you up and hand you over to them. However, we promise not to kill you. So they tied him up with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he got to Lachai, the Plishtim came running and shouting at him, and the spirit of Adonai came on him powerfully. That's the third time. The ropes on his arms became weak as burnt flax and fell from his arms. 
he found a fresh donkey jawbone, took it in his hand, and with it he struck down a thousand men. Shimshon said, with the jawbone of a donkey, I left heaps, piled on heaps. With the jawbone of a donkey, I killed a thousand men. After finished speaking, he threw the jawbone away, and the place came to be called Ramat Lahai, which means jawbone heights. Then he felt very thirsty, so he called on Adonai, saying, You accomplished this great rescue through your servant, but am I now to die from thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God made a gash in the crater at Lahai, and water came out. When he had drunk, the spirit, his spirit came back, and he revived. That is why the place was called Ein Ha Korai, the, sp the spring of him who called. And it is there in Lahai until now. He judged Israel in the period of the Plishtim for 20 years. Then moving on to chapter 16. Shimshon went to Aza, or Gaza, where he saw a prostitute and went in to spend the night with her. The people in Aza were told that Shimshon had come. So they surrounded the place where he was and also set an ambush for him all night in the city. However, Shimshon stayed in bed until midnight. Then he got up, took hold of the doors of the city gate and two posts as well, pulled them up, bar and all, hoisted them on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill overlooking Hebron. So when you look on the map between Gaza and Hebron, that's approximately 45 miles. So chapter 16, verse... For after this, he fell in love with a woman who lived in the Sorek Valley. So that's also uh, between Dan and the territory of the Philistines, mm. whose name was Delilah. The chiefs of the Plishtim went up to her and said, coax him into telling you where his great strength comes from and how we can overcome him so that we can tie him up and subdue him. If you do, each of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Shimshon, please tell me what it is that makes you so strong and how someone could tie you up and subdue you. Shimshon replied, if they tie me up with seven fresh bowstrings that have never been dried, I will become as weak as any other man. The chiefs of the Plishtim brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings which had not been dried and she tied him up with them. Now she had people lying in wait inside the room, so she said to him, Shimshon, the plishtim have come for you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of, of straw breaks when it touches fire, and the source of his strength remained unknown. Delilah said to Shimshon, You're making fun of me, telling me lies. Now come on, tell me what it takes to, to tie you up. All it takes, he answered, is to tie me up with new ropes that haven't been used. Then I'll become weak like, and be like any other, be like anyone else. So Delilah took new ropes, tied him up and said to him, Shimshon, the plishtim have come for you. The people lying in wait were inside the room, but he broke the ropes from off his arms like a thread. Delilah said to Shimshon, Till now you've been making fun of me and telling me lies. Tell me what it takes to tie you up. He said, if you weave the seven locks of my hair across thread on a loom. So she fastened her cloth work in the loom with a pin and wove his hair in. Then said to him, Shimshon, the plishtim have come for you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled away the loom pin and the interwoven cloth. She said to him, How can you say you love me when your heart isn't with me? Three times you've made fun of me and you haven't told me the source of your great strength. So isn't it interesting how he stays there? Yeah. He doesn't run away. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he's, he's with this woman, Delilah. Every day... 
Verse 16, every day she kept nagging at him and pressing at him till it bothered him to death, but didn't bother him enough to leave, right? So that he finally told her everything. He said to her, no razor has ever touched my head because I've been a Nazir of God since I was born. So the first time, you know, when he's thirsty, you know, he says to God, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm thirsty. You know, am I going to die from thirst? Mm-hmm. And then now he's, he's, he's with her. First he's with the prostitute. Now he's with somebody else. And he's, he says, I have been a Nazar of God since I was born. Mm-hmm. But he's doing all these things, mm-hmm. you know. So he still considers himself to be that. Mm-hmm. If someone shaves me, then my strength will leave me. And I will be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had really confided in her, she sent and summoned the chiefs of the Plishtim with the message, Come up this one last time, because he has finally told me the truth. The chiefs of the Plishtim went up to her and brought the money with them. She had him go to sleep in her lap and called for a man to shave off his seven locks of hair. Then she began tor- tormenting him, but his strength had gone away. She said, Shimshon, the Plishtim have come for you. He awoke from his sleep. So he had been sleeping. He awoke from his sleep and said, I'll get out this time, just as I shook myself loose before. But he didn't know that Adonai had left him. Nowhere in this chapter 16 did it say the spirit of Adonai came on him powerfully. He didn't know that, that Adonai had left him because he had been operating as he had before, breaking up these ropes and all these things she tied him up with. So the Plishtim seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Aza. There they bound him with two bronze chains and put him to work grinding grain at the mill in the prison. However, the hair on his head had been cut off. It began growing back again. The chiefs of the Plishtim assembled to offer a great sacrifice to their god Dagon. As they celebrated, they sang, Our God has handed over to us our enemy Shimshon. Upon seeing him, the people praised their god, their small g. Our God has handed over to us our enemy who destroyed our land and killed so many of us. When they were high, in high spirits, they said, Summon Shimshon to amuse us. So they called Shimshon out of the prison, and he amused them. So it's really sad that, you know, he had his eyes gouged out. He's a prisoner, and and now he's like, a big joke. He's something that they he, they could bring out, and he, they'll mm-hmm. they'll laugh at him. Mm-hmm. When they put him between the columns, Shimshon said to the boy holding him by the hand, "Let me feel the columns supporting the building, so that I can lean on them." The building was full of men and women, and all the chiefs of the Plishtim were there. In addition to them, there were about three thousand men and women on the roof, watching as Shimshon performed. Shimshon called to Adonai, Adonai Elohim. Adonai Elohim means master, covenant-keeping God of Israel, or the strong one. So he's crying out to him, Adonai Elohim, just this once, please think of me, and please give me strength so that I can take revenge on the plishtim for at least one of my two eyes. Shimshon got a hold of the two middle columns supporting the building and leaned on them, one on, on one with his right hand and on the other with his left. Then crying, let me die with the plishtim. He pushed with all his might and the building collapsed on the chief's and on all the people inside. So he killed more at his death than he had killed during his life. His brothers 
and all his father's family came down. They took, they came from Dan. They went down to the to territory of the Plishtim, took him, brought him up, and buried him between Zorah and Eshtahol. They buried him back in his own territory. In the tomb of his father Manoah, he judged Israel 20 years. He was from the tribe of Dan. And when we, when we read, you know, um, in Genesis, that he was from the family of Dan, you know, when, when, um, when the women were, were um, having children, and, and Dan means he judged when Jacob's wives were having children, and the, the name Dan meant he judged. So he was a judge in Israel, even though it was under the Plishtim. And, and then... When he went down to Aza, in, in Joshua chapter 15, verse 15, the, ter the territory chosen by Lot for the tribe of the descendants of Yehuda included the territory of Gaza. They were to conquer that territory. That, that territory, Yehuda means praise. When that, when that territory was assigned to Yehuda, it should have been a territory of praise. But even today, it's a territory where people are being tortured. And, and you know, it's, it's really sad how this, this, the, perf, the purpose of his life was to begin to rescue the people of Israel from the power of the Plishtim. But because, you know, he, dis he made choices, you know, as soon as he came out of his own territory, mm -hmm. you know, he was with prostitutes, he wanted to marry into the, into the, into the Plishtim. And he wasn't living a life that honored God but I thank God, you know, that in Matthew chapter 1, we see the genealogy of Yeshua. And, and when Yaakov was passing in Genesis chapter 49, verses 8 to 12, he refers to Yehuda as a lion's club, lion's cub. But in Revelation 5, verse 5, Yeshua is the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of David. And when I was thinking of the root, he's the root of David. And how deep do roots go? They can go two to six feet deep. And I saw that the world's deepest root, tree root, was 24 feet. You know, so those, they're very deep. And they get nourished by you know, by the earth. And um, January 24 and 25 was to Bishvat, which is the new year of the trees. So we're in a new season. And when you look at Revelations chapter 22, verses 12 and 13, in, in this translation it says, Pay attention, says Yeshua. I am coming soon, and my rewards are with me to give each person according to what he has done. Mm -hmm. Then verse 13, he says, I am the Aleph, which is the first alphabet, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and the Tav, the last letter in the alphabet. The first and the last, the beginning and the end. And then he says, um, uh, verse 16, 
I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the Messianic communities. So those of us who believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, he says, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright morning star. And verse 17 says, The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let anyone who hears say, Come. And let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life free of charge. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the Ten Commandments, uh, the Aleph represents the first commandment, which is found in Exodus uh, chapter 20, verse 2, which says, I am the Lord your God. That is the first commandment. And Aleph also means master, teacher, wondrous. You know, the Lord showed Shimshon's parents something wonderful, something so wondrous. You know, and we just need to keep clinging to the Lord. Amen. We have to remember what our purpose in life is and not to not to compromise with the enemy, not to get into bed with the enemy, yeah. not to join them in what they're doing, but to stay holy, consecrated to a holy God. Amen. So I just, mm-hmm. you know, that just really, um, that just really, when I was reading this scripture, I just couldn't help but weep, thinking of the territory of Yehuda. You know, that was, that was a sign to them. But because of their, their doing evil in the Lord's perspective, you know, he allowed them to be handed over mm. again and again to their enemies. You know, and it was Shimshon's purpose in life to begin to rescue them. But look how his life ended. So we have to be so careful how we walk. Mm -hmm. The decisions that we make, Mm -hmm. you know, they impact our children. And I thank God, you know, for his word that we can look unto him. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He is the root and offspring of David. Amen. That is so deep. You know that where he came from was from the the lineage of Yehuda. So I just wanted to share that with you today and I pray that you're blessed. Amen. Amen. Okay. But... I, I'm, on behalf of us all here, I just want to thank the Lord for his son, his daughter, his servants, who've come to share such riches and treasure with us today. And I would say to anyone who is listening or listening again, this would be a really great message to listen to several times because I can tell you it's not going to sink in all at the same time but richness and truth and so we as believers and followers of Jesus we have such richness and truth Mm -hmm. in his word in his spirit in his presence Mm -hmm. and I echo I echo the um, <coughs> I, I echo Dale in, and stand in agreement that we need to be so very cautious and careful that we may start out because the Lord has such a purpose for each and every one of our lives. He's got such a destiny for each one of us that may not be identical to the next person but that we be so careful to walk after his word in obedience to, to 
so that we don't get sidetracked the way mm -hmm. Samson did mm -hmm. or so many others and not c fully complete the call and the destiny and the purpose because God's purposes are so much greater mm -hmm. than ours. We have to look farther beyond ourselves and our own selfish desires, which Samson kept falling back into so easily be manipulated and lured and and playing with the fire that's not godly fire. When in fact, yes, that his his parents they saw they saw the angel of God, the flame of fire. Mm -hmm. And our God is an all consuming fire. Amen. And so we serve the all consuming mm -hmm. mighty God, the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage anybody who, you know, is watching online or checking in later or whatever. You know, there are there are those so many lost souls, but there's so many people who really really do need to come back into alignment mm -hmm. with the call of the Lord and the destiny that He's got for you. Mm -hmm. So just come to him and just just really just get before him and say and ask him to forgive. Turn around and repent for anything that has gotten you pulled away where you've stepped away from your own selfish desires or the ploys of the enemy that wants to uh, uh, that wants to pull you out. Because his purpose is to get back at God and take you out so that um, he can, you know, he thinks he's punishing the Lord, but it ends up being the individual who suffers and is punished. Jesus is, he is the Alpha, the Omega. Mm -hmm. He is the beginning and the end. And his plan is still not over yet mm -hmm. for the people in this earth. So I would encourage anyone just to there are so many that have needs that whether it be whether it be just natural needs or needs for the scripture or needs to be able to to just find him but whether there's all kinds of needs out there so I would encourage you just to give as you are led by the Lord Holy Spirit your tithes and your offerings belong to your home church if, uh, if you know if you've got a home church your tithes and offerings belong there but also to give alms and to offerings to those in other countries, but even in our own country, in this country of Canada. There are those who are in need, and then there's the needs of the house here, you know, just to keep, you know, you pay, you pay bills. You, have, you know, you've got your own home, and you have bills to pay, and so there are bills for this house, this home. And um, so just, you know, by all means. Just give as God tells you to give, and um, he will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. And I want to thank you. And I want to thank you, Shannon. You're just such a blessing to us. Amen. Thank you. We're grateful. Thank you. Yeah. So, <laughs> why don't you just say the right question? Yeah, would you okay. like to do that? All right. I'll open it so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Number six, mm -hmm. 24, yeah. 26. Mm -hmm. But I'll include um, verse 27. May Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai make his face shine on you and show you his favor. Mm -hmm. May Adonai lift up his face toward you and give you peace. Yeah. In this way, they are to put my name on the people of Israel mm. so that I will bless them. Amen. God Amen. bless. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. And so we'll see you next week. Lord bless you. So we'll just join in with us. Or, hey, we're at 1042 Third Avenue in Carberry, Manitoba. Holy Spirit sands. And, yes. And uh, by all means, come join in. <laughs>